Hello friends, I hope you're having a great day today. I hope that you have found yourself blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Hey, you're born again. That's all you can be, right? Is blessed. That's what we are. Hey, welcome to Thursday's edition of Take 5. Well, this week, you know what we're doing? We're trying to wind down that series that we entitled Through Faith and Patience. We pulled that title uh, and the subject from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 that says, Do not be lazy, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. And for the last couple of weeks, we've been breaking down that last part, patience. We've been talking about that. That's been kind of hard. It's been kind of a tough pill to swallow, but it's something that we all need because we've learned patience does... It's not just, uh, you know, waiting, it's not just enduring, but it's how we wait, how we endure, how we go through the trials of life. Are we doing it in a godly manner? Are we doing it in a way that brings glory to God? Are we doing it in a way that can even be a witness of the Christ that lives in us to others around us as they see us going through the trials of life? So we are trying to understand the elements that are necessary to make up patience. Uh, we know that patience helps support and sustain and maintain our faith during trying times of life. And so we're trying to look at the biblical elements that help make up patience. So far, we have discovered that we absolutely have to have confidence if we're going to endure well. We're going to have to have courage if we endure well. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week, we talked about expectation. We must have expectation if we're going to endure well. Now, there are two more things I want to talk to you about today and tomorrow. Uh, today, we're going to deal with the subject of rest. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about right speech. That's important. You want to make sure you catch that. Today, let's deal with the subject, patience requires rest. With that, and I'm, I'm not talking about the sleep that you get at night, although that's necessary for all of us in all things, but I'm talking about an emotional rest, a, a spiritual rest, a place where you learn to be quiet and just relax and, and just, I, I don't know if I should even say it this way, just chill out in the midst of circumstances. That's, that's where we've got to get to. That's necessary if we're going to endure well. I'm going to read you some verses from Psalm 37 uh, about David's life and how David learned to endure well and learned to chill out and just rest. But I want you to know that all of Psalm 37 is written to those that are disturbed by the frequent prosperity of evil men. You know, it can be very difficult for godly people to endure when they see the agenda of ungodly people constantly advancing and moving forward. And, and that seems to be what's happening all around us. And so it can be very difficult for uh, us as Christians to endure when we see that happening because we get frustrated and upset and then we don't endure well and we don't trust God's plan. So I want to read you this passage of scripture and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Psalm 37, 5 through 7 says, Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. In other words, it's your actions, your life is not going to go unobserved. He's going to bring it forth uh, like the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. There it is. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently, endure well for him, fret not because of those that prosper in their way, fret not because of the man that brings wicked devices to pass. So we see that phrase, rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him, rest. That's what we're trying to accomplish today. So the, the word rest there, when you define it from the original language, is to quiet your emotions and stand still. To quiet your fear, your frustration, your anger, all of the emotions you have to quiet them and stand still. And then the second definition is to trust the skills of the pilot. Now I know that sounds weird, but if any of you have ever had to drive when there was somebody else wanting to be a constant backseat driver and tell you how to drive and someone that just couldn't even rest without telling you how to drive, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Most Christians do not know how to be good passengers. 
We do not know how to trust the skills of the pilot, God. We don't know how to trust him too well. So when he tells us to rest, that means that we have to, we have to take action and bring our emotions under control. It means we have to learn to trust where God is taking us and how he is getting us there. He said, fret not, and that has to do with agitation of the mind. It, it means don't become vexed and worried. It means don't let these things gnaw at you and bite at you. It means don't become consumed with all of this unnecessary emotional strain. Just rest and trust God while he's taking you where he's taking you. I want to read this passage from the Passion Translation because it, it puts it in much better words. It says, give God the right to direct your life. And as you trust him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. Hey, friend, he knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's driving you through. And it would do us good. We would endure well if we'd learn just to sit back, just chill out, just rest, and let God get us there because he's going to pull it off perfectly. He will appear as your righteousness as sure as the dawning of the day. Quiet your heart in his presence and pray. Quiet your heart. Quiet your emotions. Quiet your frustrations and your fears and your anger. Quiet them in his presence and pray. Keep hope alive as you long for God to come through for you. And don't think for a moment that the wicked in their prosperity are better off than you. If God's driving your vehicle, sit back and rest, friend. Things are going to work out perfectly for you, just like God planned. So the, the message is for us to stop worrying and, and struggling with anxiety about our situation. Use this time of waiting to fall back and to rest in the capable arms of the Lord. I promise you, he'll get you there, and the journey will be much more pleasant if you'll just learn to rest and trust the skills of the pilot. You know, that's what Jesus was trying to teach the disciples when he was asleep in the boat and the storm came up. He wasn't trying to teach them how to calm the storm as we have heard in the past. Jesus was trying to teach them how to rest through the storm. He had told them, we're going to the other side. And he went back there and just lay down and went to sleep and trusted God the pilot to get him there. Well, those boys didn't learn that lesson immediately, but Peter somehow managed over time to learn it. And when Herod killed James and decided that since the people liked it so well that he's going to kill Peter the next day, he put Peter in prison to hold him until he could kill him the next day. Well, Peter finds himself in an inner prison sitting between two soldiers tied by two chains with another man guarding the door, and that boy is sound asleep. He learned his lesson. He's sleeping like a baby, and so much so that God sent an angel to deliver him, and the angel had to <laughs> slap him on the side and said, hey, wake up, boy. I'm here to get you out. I think he learned that valuable lesson. Hey, it would do us good to learn to just sit back and I'm going to say it again, just chill out and trust God and rest our emotions because he will get us where we're going and it will make the journey so much better and we will endure our time of trouble well. Well, hey, I got to get out of here, friend. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Friday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Hey, chill out. God's driving this thing. He'll get you there safe and sound.